studies, you can realize that not only are the words important and what happens in the scriptures are important, but the locations are also important as well. The locations that things are done are often something that we need to be aware of, and a lot of times we just kind of dismiss it completely. Jesus, in this particular gospel reading, had just gone over, right, the sea where he had just calmed the storm, right? And he ends up in this place called the Gadarene. It's hard to say. But as he's over there, it's a place where obviously the Jews did not go. They were taking care of pigs. They were taking care of swine. Something completely unclean. And according to superstition, according to the time of the, the times, when you were in a tomb or where you were in a graveyard, when you were in those kind of places, desolate places, that was places that were associated with fear and anxiety and ghosts and whatever else could possibly be associated with. So Jesus, he goes over to this place, and not only does he go over to this place, but he actually goes to where two demoniacs are, two people that are possessed by demons. And he goes up to them. Now, the interesting thing is, is that before even Jesus opens his mouth, the demons reply to him. The demons say, O oh, Son of God, why have you come before the time? Why have you come to punish us before it was even time? See, the demons themselves did not even realize that God had a plan that God, God's plan was coming in two steps, right? First, Jesus would come, show the way, relieve, reveal the gospel, and then Jesus will come, which we're waiting for now, for the second coming of, Jesus, of, the, of the king in all his glory. The first time he came was to fulfill everything that the prophecies had said during the Old Testament. Everything being fulfilled, and as Jesus was in his ministry, and as Jesus was progressing towards the cross, all the things were being fulfilled that had been written about by Isaiah and Ezekiel and all the people, King David. And when Jesus came, things got upset. He came and upset the apple cart. He threw things, 
a wrench in the system, and people were looking at him going, well, what is going on? Who is this guy? How can he come and forgive sins? How can he come and do all the things? Now, prior to this, he had healed people of their, their blindness and lifted people up from paralysis and done things. But to actually go before people that were demon-possessed, he went with the authority that God had given him and that same authority that we're also given today. But Jesus came, and the specific place was the tombs, the places where nobody wanted to go. And Jesus, he rebukes the demons. He sends them out, and they go into the swine, and as we read, as I read the gospel, the swine fell into the ocean and were drowned, right? Some people believe that the demons were drowned other, as well, some people don't. I'm in the, the camp to believe that they didn't. That they just wanted to be free from Jesus' presence. Not even the area. They wanted to be away from his presence. So what is it about the location that's so important? We who are Christians that understand about salvation or trying to attempt to understand about salvation, we try to understand the forgiveness aspect. We try to understand the love of God. Because even though we say we understand it, there's so much that we don't understand. We don't understand that a lot of people look at God and attribute their own minds, their own thinking, their own understanding to what God is doing in the world. Why would God allow this virus? Why would God allow this? Why would God allow that? And my question to that is, is why would he not? Have we been faithful to him? Have we been loving to him? Have we reserved places for him but that's another argument for another day today we're talking about two demon possessed people and he goes Jesus goes to a place where he shouldn't really have been as a good Jewish person to a place where there were hurting swine so Jesus he often goes to places that he should not be we who are Christians, we believe that when we're baptized, we're newly illumined, right? But we want Jesus to come into us. We want Jesus to come into our heart to continue to change us. That's why we do confession. That's why we try to unburden our souls. We try to unburden that part of us so that way Jesus can come in and dwell in safety, right? He doesn't need to be safe. But I want Jesus to be in a place where my person, my humanity, is not wrestling with the spirit within. I want God to be a part of my life. I want God to be in my heart. Does God stop just at the Christians? He does not. Even when somebody is demon-possessed, even when all the evils in the world are happening, God, Jesus, is not afraid to go to those lonely places. He is not afraid to go to the places where people are demon-possessed and are evil, hurling insults about him or hating him. God does not fear where to go. And that's what Jesus was teaching us in the gospel today. God will move. God will be in people's lives. Now, as Christians, we're supposed to be, as I've said many, many times before, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be going out into the world and going to places that we're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be going without fear. Now, I'm not saying to be ignorant. I'm not saying to go in and you, you, you're, you believe that God's going to allow you to go into a war zone and you're going to come out of faith. God does not want us to be something that's ignorant, not using our mind. However, if God prompts us to do something like that, then we need to pray about it. Because the enemy can confuse and can deceive us. Even in the deception and the guise of holiness, right? We know this. We understand this. If you've read any of the saints, if you've read any of the things, we know that even the demons come disguised as something of holiness. But it's a disguise. It's something that is hidden from us. But God, he goes into those places. When we come into the church, when we come into the presence of God here in 
that say they found us. We come into a place that's kind of separate from the world. We believe, and when we pray that God is coming down upon us, we pray that the Holy Spirit comes. He, may, he, he creates something new with the bread and the wine and makes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. But when we leave the church, we're supposed to go with a renewed strength, with a renewed vigor, and we're supposed to be fearless. We're supposed to be full of hope. We're supposed to be full of faith. We're supposed to be full of love and compassion and mercy, all the things that we sing every single time during the Beatitudes. We're supposed to take what we've learned and the strength that we have into the darkness of the world. Jesus, he came out, he came from light, he came into the darkness of the world, and he traveled into different places and encountered people that the Jews had no desire even wanting to associate with. Demoniacs, people who herded swine, and ultimately, the Gentiles. We read about last week, the Roman soldier coming, and Jesus says, okay, let's go. And the Roman soldier's like, no, 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 he understood more than the Jews did, because he was open-minded. He opened his heart to the message that he had heard, the witness that he had heard. This guy is healing people. This guy is witnessing. This guy is showing us a way. Somebody had to have been talking to him for him to know what was going on. And Jesus, he was even willing to go to this Roman soldier's house, a pagan house. He was willing to go. What are we to do as Christians? We are supposed to witness and we are supposed to go into the places where we're not supposed to go. And that is in the world, right? We are aliens and strangers here in this world. And we're waiting to be taken. We're waiting to go. As we get closer and closer to God, as we allow God, right? We have to allow him. He's a gentleman. As we allow God to come into our hearts, there's no room for the demons to be in it. And if we are allowing sin, if we're allowing this poison, if we're allowing this darkness to come into our heart, it actually stifles the Holy Spirit. It, the Holy Spirit never leaves, but it sure pushes it. And as we can see, clearly see, if you watch the news or social media or any of the things that we see, we can definitely see that the love of many people has grown cold. Have we not? Have we not seen the world as we know it going rapidly into a place where it is just growing cold? Revelation talks many times about the, the churches that the letters and the warnings are going to. You need to be hot or you need to be cold. But the per people that God was most disgusted with were the people that were lukewarm. He actually said, I'm going to spit them out of my mouth. I'm going to get rid of them if you're lukewarm. If you believe in God and you just kind of believe in God and you're not progressing towards moving in that direction where God is the Lord and Savior of your life, you're lukewarm. You are lukewarm. You must continually be moving forward. Because if you become stagnant, if you become lukewarm, God's just going to spit you out of his mouth. Jesus himself said, Lord, Lord, who will believe our report, right? Who's going to believe? We, when, when you were here, we believed in you. He says, well, no, well, you didn't go out and feed the poor. You didn't go out and take care of the people in the prisons. You didn't go out and feed, uh, clothe the naked. You didn't feed you didn't do this, you didn't do that. That's what Jesus came to teach us. If we're going home and we're sitting in front, and I'm guilty of this as well, and I because that's why I'm saying we. If we're going home and we are just going in front of the TV and zoning out and allowing the TV to be our dominance in our mind, and we're not worshiping, we're not praying, we're not glorifying the Lord, if we're not going out and making a difference in this world, we are lukewarm. Period. Even when we're at work, even when we're among the people, we can be Jesus to those people. We can be the light 
that shines in the darkness. It didn't say anywhere in the scriptures, I want you to worship me, I want you to pray about me, I want you to talk about me, only in the church. I want you to believe, I want you to glorify, I want you to praise, only in the church. All the time. How do we do it when we're at work? I know a lot of people ask. How do we do it when we're at work? By being honest. By being diligent. By being kind. By being loving and patient. By being all the things that St. Paul talks about with the fruits of the Spirit. How do we do that at the store? Same way. Exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit. And if we are not kind, if we are not holy, if we are not progressing towards that place, we are lukewarm. I want and I hope and I pray that it just puts a fire underneath you. That it puts a fire in your heart to move forward. Now, I'm not saying that God's going to give up on us because we've been stagnant for 20 years. But you never know. You never know the time or the hour, first of all, when Jesus is going to come back. Jesus says, I'm going to come back like a thief in the night. You don't know when I'm coming. You don't know when to be ready. You don't know how long you're going to have. You could have one minute. You could have one month. You could have a hundred years. But Jesus says, I will be coming back. And there will be time in this place where people will be doubting, right? How are we not seeing it now? Are we not seeing what's happening in this world? Where is your promises, O oh Lord? Where are the things that you promised us? Where is, where are you? Why are you allowing all these things? And I always wonder to myself, how can these people know what's on God's mind if they're not working towards understanding who they are themselves? Who is God to us? It only takes time for us to spend time with him. When you're married, when you have a spouse, when you have somebody that you love, when you have children, we are supposed to take time to understand them. We're supposed to take time to understand who they are and what they believe and what they know and what they deserve from us. What do they deserve? The fruits of the Spirit. That's what they deserve. And we, in turn, are supposed to get the same back. But a lot of times, in this world, we want what we want. We want to only be concerned about our self-worth, our emotions, our beliefs. But it's not just about our hearts. Yes, salvation is ours. Nobody can take that away from us except ourselves. Salvation is mine. If I want it. And that's the big word. If. If I want it. If I want it, it's there for me to take. And God, he's not afraid of how dirty, how dark, how sinful I am. He comes to me where I am. But that means that we need to go to him where he is. See, the, te the, the demon, the demoniacs that were in the tombs, they actually came out to Jesus. Yes, they said, what are you here to do for us? Why are you here to persecute us before the time? But they still came to Jesus because there was a part of them, even though that they were demon-possessed, there was a part of them that wanted freedom. If you want freedom, it's yours. If you want freedom, it's yours for the taking. Believe. 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 And trust that God is with us. It doesn't matter how crazy the world's become. It matters that we stand firm on the rock that's Jesus Christ. So as we prepare, as we persist, and as we go forward from today until we are called home. Don't be lukewarm. Go to God. Go to God and tell him, I still need work. Do you think, and I'm going to end with this, do you think all of 
those saints that we call saints, and Iscarius, and John, any of these saints on the walls, do you think that they just woke up one day and said, you know what, I'm holy enough? Do you? I'm holy enough. I've got there, Lord. No. They constantly were fighting. And as a matter of fact, they were constantly telling themselves, I am the biggest sinner there is. What did St. Paul say? I am a sinful and wretched person. He wrote most of the books of the Bible, of the New Testament, that we read today. Do not become lukewarm. Do not be stagnant and continue moving forward. That is the task that I am set with to keep prompting you, to keep pulling you, and sometimes pushing you in the direction that you need to go. The Lord our God is wonderful and glorious, and he comes to us where we are. Amen. Amen. Let us all say, Lord.